This is more than just a story. It's a telling of real life. But more specifically, this is the telling of my life. I am dyslexic. And from my experience, a lot of people don't know what dyslexia actually is. Google definition for dyslexia is a general term for disorders that involve difficulty in learning to read, interpret words, letters, and other symbols. The most common misconception that surrounds dyslexia is that it affects a person's general intelligence, which is simply untrue. And that misconception is something that I have dealt with my entire life. Growing up, I was definitely a creative child. I expressed myself by dancing, singing, and drawing, all sorts of things. Being creative was one of the ways I could express myself, even if I wasn't always the best at what I was doing. But it was around this time that my mom began to realize that I was struggling in a few different ways. Specifically during dance, I always had a really hard time trying to make sure that I was on the right foot or using the right arm. As I got older, my mom began to question whether or not I was dyslexic. She noticed that I was having a lot of issues with spelling and specifically reading out loud. As an example with my spelling, this specific drawing says, I'm sorry that you are sick. But when my mom confronted the school with her suspicions, they said that there was no way I was dyslexic and that I was simply too smart. But my mom was still not satisfied with the school's answer. She knew something was wrong, so in third grade she decided to take me to an independent dyslexia facility. My mom took me to a lady named Jody Harbour. She took me in to do a consultation with her, and within five minutes, Jody Harbour told my mom that I was dyslexic, no doubt about it. She continued the consultation by breaking down the three main types of dyslexia. These consist of dyslexia, dysgraphia, and dyscalculia. To the general public, all of these are known as learning disorders. However, as described by Jody Harbour, these are simply a different way of learning, not a learning disability. Dyslexia is an issue that involves difficulty with reading. It also affects writing, spelling, and speaking. People often find it hard to isolate sounds, match sounds to letters, or blend sounds into words. Dysgraphia is an issue that involves difficulty with the physical act of writing. Many people find it hard to organize and express their thoughts in a written form. And finally, dyscalculia is an issue that results in difficulty with learning and comprehending arithmetic, such as difficulty in understanding numbers, learning how to manipulate numbers, performing mathematical calculations, and learning mathematical facts and statistics. There are several different ways to learn whenever you have one of these learning disabilities. However, no two dyslexic people are the same. Jody Harbour taught with methods that were approved by the DDA, also known as the Davis Dyslexia Association. This specific program taught students to visualize words and letters. This helped dyslexic kids process these things in their minds. These are just a few examples of the clay figures that I made for years after this program. They helped me learn how to spell and visualize words in my brain. 
This technique helped prepare me for several spelling tests to come. While this type of learning worked wonderfully for me, it wasn't offered at the school, which made things a little bit more complicated. The school's program for teaching dyslexic children often revolved around phonetics, which was not how I learned in any way, shape, or form. Because this learning style didn't work for me personally, I had to find a different way to learn, and that included fending for myself and learning how to advocate for myself. At this age, it was very important for me to learn how to advocate for myself and learn how to do things on my own and ask for help when I needed it. But that was just the tip of the iceberg for me. Little did I know, as I got older, things would get a little bit more complicated. Towards the end of elementary school and throughout middle school, people started bullying me for being dyslexic and taking longer on tests and assignments. While this may not seem like that big of a deal now, at the time it was really heartbreaking and hard to deal with. I faced new challenges daily, but in the end I believe this made me a stronger person. But to fully understand what I was going through, you have to understand what it is like to be a dyslexic person. It doesn't seem to matter what you're doing, but there seems to always be this unspoken pressure. Pressure that you have to prove yourself. To prove that you're just as smart as everyone else. To show that you have value. It feels like pressure in your chest. It's a constant anxiety of not being good enough. And a crippling fear that no matter how hard you try, you'll never be as smart as anyone around you. It's that fear and that feeling that motivates me to try and do my very best. Understanding the pressure and anxiety of being dyslexic is one thing, but actually being there and feeling that every moment of your life is a completely different thing. It sometimes feels like you're floating, like you're out in your own world. Like at every moment, there's someone watching you and judging you. That there's always some sort of pressure on you. A lot of times, you just flat out feel alone. I would like to really put it in perspective for you. Take a moment to read this out loud. Did reading that make you feel kind of anxious? Stupid? Like you didn't really know what you were doing? That's how a lot of dyslexic kids feel every moment that they try to read something. A whopping 30% of dyslexic students never get diagnosed. Without being diagnosed, it makes many kids feel stupid or inferior to their peers because they don't understand what's happening in the school. I know for many people, being dyslexic is no walk in the park. And that's why I believe it's important that schools increase testing so that way more dyslexic students are discovered. And because each student is different, I believe that individualized testing would benefit the school greatly. In addition to this testing, I believe that the creation of individualized programs for these students would be extremely beneficial. In addition to all of this, I spoke to many teachers throughout this entire process. And several of them told me that they didn't have any training whenever it came to dyslexia. They knew the very minimum basics, but other than that, they had no training. Without proper training and without kind of knowing what a dyslexic student goes through, it makes it very hard for teachers to recognize dyslexia in a classroom. Educating our teachers and staff on dyslexia would greatly improve situations for dyslexic students. But even with all of this pressure, there are some upsides to being dyslexic, even if it doesn't always seem like it. 
People with dyslexia typically are more creative because they have to come up with different solutions when it comes to learning. With this fact in mind, it's kind of cool to know that 50% of NASA engineers are actually dyslexic. And I know that many of my dyslexic friends are creative in multiple different ways. Creativity comes in many forms, and I believe it's important to showcase these different forms. For me specifically, I express myself via photography and other forms of art. Within this art, I love capturing people's emotions and trying to show the joyful moments in people's lives. And because life isn't always joyful, I like to capture also what it feels like whenever you're going through something tough. I use photography as an outlet for my personal emotions and I use it to express myself creatively. And I know not everyone's going to understand why I do what I do or why I take certain photos. But at the end of the day, I like to use my photography to express my experiences in life. For example, whenever I've been bullied and how that felt. I like to document people and the impact that they've had on my life. And at the end of the day, I use dyslexia as a creative tool for me. Dyslexia gives me a different perspective on so many different things and it just makes me need to look for a new angle. And at the end of the day, I just want people to know that just because you have a quote-unquote learning disability, it doesn't mean it should stop you from pursuing what you love.